Equilibrium. After the end of the Third World War, the surviving governments decided to outlaw emotion as it was deemed the very root of all the problems. Mankind now lives in a sterile, neutral society where several daily doses of a drug called prosium, which suppresses the emotions, has to be taken. A new force has been hired to take out any so-called sense offenders, those who dare to go off the drug and feel. They are the Grammaton Cleric. Our lead is one such cleric, John Preston. When we meet him, he is a strict enforcer of the law. However, as the film progresses, he himself begins to feel, and he may now be the one man who can overthrow this government. Equilibrium isn't the first film Kurt Wimmer did, it's the second, but it is the first where he really got to do what he wanted to do with the film. The film is very stylized throughout. He went even further with this in Ultraviolet, starring Mila Jovovich, where I think the intent was to make a live-action comic book, or THE live-action comic book movie. No compromises, no toning it down, as wild and as colorful as a good comic can be. It's also a very good film, and the gun kata, which I'll get into in a second, is definitely smoother. However, there's also a bit much of it, and in both of these, there's not that much of a sense of danger for the lead <clears throat> because of his impeccable abilities. By the sheer force of how stylized and how fast-paced it is, however, it is still exciting. In Ultraviolet, there's a little much of it, and you wind up not caring what happens in the film before the 90 minutes it lasts have passed. In this, you never quite stop caring. There's a better balance between action and drama. Ultraviolet is the more visually stunning and visually creative, and I definitely do recommend it if you like what you see in Equilibrium, and vice versa. If you like Ultraviolet, I recommend Equilibrium. And the action and the action scenes also tend to be fairly different from one another in both films, maybe more so in this one. For this film, writer-director Kurt Wimmer invented the so-called gun kata, a martial arts style that also utilizes guns. Now the result of this is twofold. Not only does it expand the movements one does when in a gunfight from just taking cover and going from cover to cover to more elaborate motions, switching targets incredibly quickly, and in general in this those who practice gun kata don't really take cover, they dodge. And the other result is literally using firearms as hand-to-hand -hand combat weapons. Now, the way they explain the dodging is that any practitioner of gun kata incredibly swiftly changes their stance to the most statistically probable safe location to where he probably won't be hit by bullets. Also firing in the directions that are most statistically probable to hold enemies and thus instead of repeatedly firing at someone who takes cover in this those who practice gun kata can take out their enemies with fairly few bullets then moving on to the next one. And all of this happens in the space of seconds. It's very different from most action films, and if you like stylized action, it's incredibly fun. If you've played Red Steel for the Wii, think of the tagging mode. In fact, this concept could really kick ass as a video game, but I digress. The story is great, although there may be a couple of scenes where I personally didn't quite understand why Preston had to delay his uprising probably a side effect of how invulnerable an ass-kicker he is in every action scene. The pace is spot on, you're never bored. The action is excellent and very well choreographed. This is low budget, but you can't really tell most of the time. The designs are very nice. This presents a very credible vision of a society ruled by a totalitarian government. We find out that there is one person who 
controls everything, if you are allowed to directly talk to him, and he directs people through these monitors all over the city. The symbol for this rule is a T. And while that might sound a bit plain, it bears a remarkable resemblance to the cross. And I think that might have been intentional. It's no secret that for hundreds of years, Christianity has been suppressing our needs. There's also a different version where it's four T's, but that one bears a remarkable resemblance to the swastika. Now, I understand this wasn't actually intentional, but I personally think it works. Some have complained that clearly some of these people are still feeling some emotions. My take on it is that the drug takes off the highs and the lows. And also, yes, some of the higher-ups in the society, those in government, do clearly feel. However, it is not a secret that in a dictatorship, the ruler won't necessarily follow the rules he sets down for everyone below him. In fact, he probably won't. Those who overthrew the government and created communist regimes don't lead as Spartan lives as the lower and middle classes. Hitler himself was a dark, short-haired, lazy man, rather far from the tall, blue-eyed, blonde, and very disciplined ideal of Nazi Germany. The acting is fantastic. Bale is spot on, whether subdued or overcome by emotion. His partner in the film, Tay Diggs, smiles fairly often, and as Wimmer himself points out, while it is a nice smile, it is also a kind of what is he hiding smile. He must be covering something up with a smile like that. Sean Bean shines in a positively tiny role. William Fichtner delivers, doesn't he always? Heck, even the children. Preston has a son and a daughter and both of them are just spot on, especially the boy, who's asked to do more. The film has a lot of twists, and admittedly, near the very end, it almost gets to be too much. Maybe it does get to be too much, in fact. Having watched three movies written by Wimmer now, this, Ultraviolet, and Salt, I would say he loves twists. I think he fares better as far as twists go in Ultraviolet, but most of the twists in this are good. The clothes are also fantastic, and I'm not usually someone who even notices costumes. This is clearly inspired by George Orwell's 1984, as well as Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451, the cornerstones of fiction writing about dictatorships. But this is the slickest presentation of them, and by far the best film I've seen based on these ideas. Now I've heard someone, I've heard that some people think that the idea of the prosium is basically like the drugs in George Lucas's THX 1138. I would have to disagree. Okay, the similarities. In both films, these drugs are intended to keep the populace calm and easy to control. Both are science fiction movies. And that's it. In this, it is the law to have to be under these drugs. If you don't, you will be hunted down and prosecuted. In THX 1138, it's a metaphor for consumerism. It's saying that as long as we live in a consumerist, capitalist society, we're gonna be subdued by what we buy and use. THX 1138 is a commentary on the society that we have today in the Western world on materialism. Equilibrium is about totalitarianism, repression, and why emotions are necessary even though they can beat the crap out of us at times. Anyway, excellent stylized action, a story with real heart to it, great acting. It won't be for everyone, but you'll probably pretty quickly be able to tell if you're gonna like it or not. I recommend that you at least rent it. That was my spoiler for review of Equilibrium. Hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time.